section 6.3 of the grade 9 academic course, graph a line using intercepts. So today's goal is to, by the time we move on to our next lesson, we want to use x and y intercepts to better understand a, an equation or, or um, any linear, a linear uh, equation. Uh, and Charlie here is studying hard on his math. He's trying to just, he's hoping by putting his head on it, it'll just sort of absorb into his brain. Okay. So just a couple little definitions before we get into the work and what, we're, what we'll be doing today. Uh, an x-intercept is just where the line crosses the x-axis, and an x-axis, an x-intercept means that the y is 0, and a y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis because x equals 0. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Again, I'm going quick, quickly through these, and I just want you to take responsibility and stop the tape when I start going too fast. Re-listen, take time to pause, and make sure you get the full note down. Okay, so graphically, just what they mean, the x-intercept in this case is right here. I was trying to point at it. And its coordinates are minus 3, 0. 1, 2, 3, right there, and 0. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And in this case as well, it's, it's, um, this time it's the x is 0, but the y coordinate is negative 3. Okay, so that's just what it is graphically, the x and y intercepts. Um, using x and y intercepts, we're going to use them, um, fi we're going to find them first of this standard form of an equation, or not even standard form, just a form, <laughs> a form of a, of a linear relation, okay? And then we're going to use those intercepts to, to graph the line. So uh, just split the page. Uh, first we'll find the x-intercept and then the y. So let's just look at the x for now. And the strategy is to sub in y equals 0 because we say the x-intercept is where y value equals 0. So we're going to sub that in and solve for x because wherever y equals 0, whatever that x value is, that's our x-intercept. So just looking at the equation, here it is. Okay. So I'm subbing in y equals 0. So instead of writing y, I write 0. Then that means 3x equals 4. Um, then to find, I better write this out, then we need to divide both sides by 3. And that leaves us with x equals 4 over 3. And we'll leave that as a just as a fraction. But if you were to put that in your calculator, you'd get uh, 1.3333 uh, repeated, okay? That little dot up there means repeated. Okay, so that tells us one point in the line. It's 4 over 3 and 0, right? The x-intercept and 0. Doing the exact same thing with the y-intercept, but this time you sub in x equals 0, okay? Same idea, same strategy, but we want to find what y is when x has no value. So same equation. 3x minus y equals 4, so 3 times 0 this time, minus y equals 4. That leaves us with uh, minus y equals 4. I, I put the 1 in there, minus 1y equals 4. Now we divide both sides by minus 1, and you end up with y equals negative 4. So just let me see, minus 1 there. We do that, right, because we want to end up with uh, just y with nothing at all, just y by itself, y equals negative 4. So remember that... Um, Negative 4 over 1 is the same as saying uh, negative 4 over 1. However you see it, it's all the same thing. Okay? So however you see that, it always just equals the same thing, which is negative 4. Okay, so there's another point on our line. So we found our x and y intercepts. That part's done. Okay? Now we need to use the intercepts to graph the line. So all you do fairly simple, is locate each point on the line and then connect them. So 0 and negative 4, there's my um, y-intercept down here. My x-intercept, um, like I said, this is why I put it as uh, decimals, by the way. Um, I put it as decimals because, um, you know, you don't really think, you may not really think of a fraction. You could, you could go up by fractions on your graph, but usually if you just go up by 1s, which you did, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and same as 1s down here. Uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Then you choose, you take your two points, and really to make the line, all you have to do is, is attach two points. And then, you know, the line goes on forever. That's why we have the plus, the, um, sorry, the, the arrows. There's nothing telling us this line doesn't go on forever. But as long as you have two points, you can connect them, and you graft your line. 
Okay. Um, find the slope of a line that has a y-intercept of 2 and x-intercept of minus 5. So two ways we can do that. Okay. The first one we're going to do is using the slope formula. So the slope formula is uh, what I have written right here. Okay, that's the slope formula. Uh, we know two points on the line. We know because we know the intercepts, and this, so that tells me if the y-intercept is two, that's one point on the line, and if the x-intercept is negative five, that's another point on the line. And I'm just saying here, well, we'll call this one x1, y1. We'll call this one x2, y2. And then you can use your slope formula. So um, y2 is zero, right? Kind of line them up there. Y2 is zero and y1 is 2, so 0 minus 2, and x2 is negative 5, and x1 is 0, and you end up with negative 2 over negative 5, which is just 2 over 5. So that's one way of finding, of finding the slope. Okay. The second way uh, that you could do it is graphing. And if I don't specifically ask you how to do it on a test, then I guess you can do whichever way you like better. But graphing is you just identify those points, right? So here's my x-intercept at minus 5 and 0. Here's this point here, minus 5. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0. And here's my y-intercept at 2, uh, sorry, point 0 in the x and 2 in the y. And so I've got those two points in the line. Now if I'm using the graphing method, I'm going to identify the two points. Then I'm going to use rise and run between them. So the rise between those two points is from here to here, right? Okay, so my rise is 2, so it goes from here to here, which is 2 up, and my run is how far it goes this way, right? From here to here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My run is 5. So my slope is rise over run, 2 over 5. Okay, so that was the second way to find the slope, and either one are perfectly accurate. Well, you sometimes using the graph isn't as accurate. If you have nice points, it's good, but anyway, moving on. Oh, that's it actually for this lesson. So, uh, yeah, um, that should be it for today. If you have uh, any questions, please stop, re-listen to a little bit, and because uh, I'm making the videos quicker, right, which is nice. But I, you probably, if you're feeling stuck, it'd be a good thing to re-listen to a couple thoughts and take time to ask me a question if you have one. Okay, write it down here where your questions are, where you're stuck, and when I talk to you in class, just um, make sure you ask where you where you didn't understand, if if you didn't understand. Great.